This is a question on AQA A-level chemistry. It is from required practical assessments in paper three, and it's based on RPA5. As always, I'm going to recommend you pause on the question, have a go at it, and then review the answer when you're done. We're going to start here with parts A, B, C, and D. We also have a part E and F. So now let's have a look at the answers that we're looking for. Student planning an experiment, investigating yield of propanoic acid, sample of propan 1 all being oxidized. We've got the apparatus set up, we've got the diagram, but the teacher is saying that the apparatus is not safe. You need to give two reasons why that is the case. Well, the first thing to look at is we've got a clamp on the condenser. And if we're identifying one clamp, we need to identify all clamps. And without a clamp on the round bottom flask, there's a risk it's just going to fall off and smash. So the first answer here is that the round bottom flask is not clamped. Second thing that we want to look at is that we've got a bung in the top. Now, we don't use a bung when we are oxidizing under reflux a primary alcohol to a carboxylic acid. The whole purpose of the condenser is to stop the vapor escaping and to move back down. There is a danger with a bung actually that there's going to be a buildup of pressure that leads to the risk of actually breaking the glassware, again, causing injury. On to part B, give one additional reagent that's needed to form any propanoic acid. Well, we've got the potassium dichromate 6, but the key word that's missing here is acidified. The acid that we use is sulfuric acid. Finally, there are two more mistakes not related to safety, but that might impact on the validity of the results. What two other mistakes are there in the way the apparatus is set up? Well, actually we have got the direction of the water flow. The water is going in at the top and out at the bottom. We want it to be coldest where the vapor is getting to it so that it will condense and fall back down in these circumstances. Second one is that we don't need that thermometer. Now, we wouldn't be able to put the thermometer in there if we didn't have the bung to support it and hold it in place. But we don't need that thermometer as part of what we're doing to oxidize my primary alcohol. And then state the purpose of the small glass beads in the flask in the figure that we see. They are anti-bumping granules and they are to prevent bumping. They, you could also say that they are to ensure that small bubbles are produced. It stops the apparatus jolting around essentially. Moving on to parts E and F. So we've corrected the mistakes. Student heats a reaction mixture containing 6.5 grams of propan 1 ol. We've got an excess of the oxidizing agent. The propanoic acid that we got in the end was 3.25. What technique would we use to separate propanoic acid from the reaction mixture? There's part one, that's fractional distillation, and calculate the percentage yield of propanoic acid. So let's go through the calculation. First of all, let's work out the moles of propan 1 ol. We've got a mass and we can find its MR. 6.5 over 60 takes us to 0 0.108 moles. From there, I can look at the expected moles of propanoic acid. Well, for, we can see that we would get 0 0.1083 moles there as well, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And if I know that, I can work out the expected mass by multiplying that by the MR, and it brings us to 8.02 grams. Percentage yield is the actual mass collected divided by the maximum theoretical mass. We actually got 3.25 grams. We could theoretically have got 8.02. So we divide those, multiplied by 100. That takes us to a percentage of 40.5. And finally on this question, state a simple chemical test that distinguishes between propanoic acid and propan 1 ol and state one observation for the test for each substance. I've opted here for adding sodium hydrogen carbonate. That will react with the acid, it will produce CO2, so our observation will be effervescence. Propan 1 ol, we will get no visible change. You could just as feasibly have gone for acidified potassium dichromate 6 and warm it, and we would get no visible change with the acid, it's already been oxidised, and the orange to green colour change when we oxidise the primary alcohol with propan 1 ol. That takes us to the end of this question. Thank you for listening and goodbye.